Hello, everyone. And this is in continuation to the session, study session we were doing on Antakarna uh, from the book Teachings of Great Ones, uh, written by Torkam Saridanian. And I am Ritu Shweta Kocher, who's doing this study. So we continue with the teachings of Master DK, Master Dajwalkur, as explained by Torkam Saradanian. What does the term Antikarna mean? How can we build it and what do we profit from building it? Antikarna is the Sanskrit word for the bridge. I repeat, Antikarna meaning, it means the bridge. It is the Sanskrit word for the bridge. The mental body is divided into seven levels. As you advance in your education, clear thinking and meditation, your soul advances up, up, up and up. This advancement is called the path. Every year you go a little higher. Most of us are on the fourth level. To pass to a higher level, you must pass a certain initiation and do some heroic work of striving and labor. You must express great sacrifices and great enlightenment. Our life is a steady traveling. If you are really an honest and sincere disciple, if you feel that the whole creation is a great school, in which you are a student, if you feel that you must proceed by yourself on the path of enlightenment and sublimation so that you will eventually be a light, you are going to take life very seriously. Every day you are going to proceed on this path through meditation, clear thinking, prayer, dedication and service. On the fourth level, there is the mental unit, which in the future will be discovered by science. Thousands of years before genes were discovered, the great ones knew about the genes. Science is now very close to discovering what genes actually are. Science has discovered that the makeup of genes can change when a person starts to meditate and transform his life. There must be something behind the genes that operates them and changes them. Science has not yet discovered what that something is. We call this controlling factor the mental unit. The most important thing he taught about the mental unit is this. It is very dangerous. Don't dwell on it. But because I like dangerous things, that is, Tarkam likes dangerous things. He went deeper and deeper into it and found many interesting things. The mental unit is the program and the computer of your mental plane, but it works only on the fourth level of the mind when you are conscious on that level. This mental unit is now a unit of light and it programs everything that you do in your life. It contains the past and the present records of your conscious deeds. The computer works and controls your life. The seventh, sixth and fifth levels of the mind are the subconscious mind and they are linked with the mental unit. Building the Antakarna is to create a communication line between all the levels. If you damage your conscious mind, for example, at 30 or 40 degrees, you will have a 30 or 50 degree mind, not more. For example, all of your mental striving studies, expansion of consciousness and mental creativity are all here in the mental unit. If you sublimate yourself and become a clear thinker in greater and greater degrees, 
And if you use all of your creative thinking for the welfare of humanity, this mental unit becomes a shining light. We do not have communication or knowledge about the higher worlds because the records of our past lives and our future are in the mental permanent atom on the first level of the mind. We do not know what is going on because we do not have a communication line. If this communication line is built, you will be aware of what is going on in these three highest levels of the mind. Each level of the mental body is a mirror that reflects whatever activities are going on in the corresponding planes of the mental plane of the planet and the solar system. These are reflected in your higher mental levels. If you are in the third level, you will really communicate with whatever is occurring on the third level of the mental plane of our planet and solar system. All fairy beings who are creative forces, creating flowers, trees, controlling the weather, lightning and magnetic electrical energies to keep this big spaceship going in the right direction are here in the higher mental planes of the planet and solar system. It is like having a great television set in your mind that will reflect the corresponding lives in the corresponding mental levels of the planetary and solar system's mental bodies. If you go to the second level of the mind, you will find fairy arhats on a planetary scale and solar scale. The field of your information, knowledge and enlightenment is growing so much that you are becoming a fountain of wisdom, light and creativity. When you come to the first level, you are for the first time coming in contact with the units of willpower. This is not channeling. It is a systematic study. Some people think that the spiritual life is to sit and hallucinate or it is listening to channels and mediums and following phenomena. It is none of these things. It is very hard work. It is discipline of your body, purification of your emotions and enlightenment of your mental body by working two or three hours for your own salvation. The spiritual life is not fooling around, demonstrating hatreds, fear, jealousy, revenge, separatism, and so on. The spiritual life is to enter into the stream of divine wisdom and to surrender yourself to that great life. That life takes you and transforms you. This needs hard work. After you build this first section of the Antakarna, there are also higher sections. So this is the illustration which Torkam has shared. I hope it shows something. So I will read the details about this illustration, the diagram, about seven planes on the cosmic physical plane. In this illustration, we see that there are seven planes of the human being, physical, emotional, mental. Then there are the buddhic, atmic, monadic, and divine planes. Also, there are seven levels of the mental planes, as in the previous diagram. These seven levels of the mental plane are the first part of Antakarna. The second part must go to the intuitional permanent atom. The intuitional permanent atom is the seed that creates the intuitional body. When we die, the intuitional body disperses. But the intuitional permanent atom stays like a seed for the future. Then there is the atmic permanent atom. The Antakarna has so expanded that is 
it has entered into the intuitional plane and the atomic plane. What will happen when your consciousness enters into that triangle, the spiritual triad? First, you will immediately be in contact with ashrams. What are ashrams? Ashrams are not what radios talk about. Ashrams are not here. They are in the intuitional plane. When you are advanced enough, you enter into the ashram and sit. There, great ones explain things that you never dreamt about. Because your antakarna is built, you awaken and come down to the mental plane and hook yourself to your brain. Then write down everything that you are studying in the ashrams. There are very serious things to be done in the world rather than wasting your time with stupid things such as showing off and the vanity that you are teaching things, doing things and becoming certain things. All of this vanity must melt away. You must come to your senses and say, I am nothing. I must start right now to build myself for the future. When you are entering into the Atmic plane, you are in communication with your hands. Very advanced angels or initiates who are working under the supervision of great forces and their correspondences in the planet and solar system. At this point, you are entering into the White House and from the White House, you enter into the White House on higher and higher levels. You are becoming acquainted with the real, real causes of things that are happening on this planet. Eventually, you will enter into even higher realms. The Antkarna is eventually built to even higher realms. There are diagrams in his book, which some ashram of the Tibetan master created that show how a person is building his antakarna. You can observe where it is going from the atmic to the monadic, then to the planetary logos, the solar logos, and infinity. This is what the Christ was. He said, I never speak anything myself. It is my father who speaks through me. He became one with the Father because he built his Antkarna. When you come to these levels, you will build your radio station, your television station, which takes all of these messages and brings them down to your brain. For the first time, this teaching was given by the Tibetan master DK. In the arcane school, they give this teaching in the fourth degree level. I wrote two very practical chapters about this subject in the psyche and psychism. In the science of becoming oneself, there is also a ch chapter titled The Rainbow Bridge. When I speak about these things, I realize how much labor we must do in order to transcend ourselves and come to our senses and be serious about life. How is the Antakarna built? It is built through meditation, through abstract thinking. Sit every day for 15 minutes and meditate. This does not mean chanting, hallucinating, and seeing images or hearing voices. These are all traps. They are not meditation. Meditation is pure scientific and analytical thinking. For example, let us say that there is a war someplace in the world. You are going to think, why is this war happening? How is it happening? What is the quality, the purpose and the cause of this war? When you are thinking and revealing the secrets of an event, you are meditating. Again, meditation does not mean hallucination. We do not mean astral medium contacts. We do not mean chanting. 
we are talking about really sitting and doing meditation. If you are in meditation and hearing voices and seeing things, you are sidetracked. Alice Bailey never took anyone into the advanced teaching who had lower psychic experiences. The Antakarna is built by doing continuous rhythmic meditation. The Antakarna is built by the study of abstract subjects, thinking and synthesizing things. The Antakarna is built by serving. Americans have a little difficulty with serving. They think that to serve means to accumulate dollars. When we first arrive in this country from the Middle East, we stayed with the family. In that family, there was a 13-year-old boy and two younger girls. The father said to the boy, you stay with your sisters while we help Torka move. The boy asked, Daddy, how many hours will you be gone? Maybe four hours. Well, four hours will be $12, the boy said. The father gave $12 to his son to babysit his sis sisters. I said, is this the psychology of this country? Why was the boy thinking that he must be paid for babysitting his sisters? Service is not doing something in expectation of receiving honor, reputation, applause, respect, or money, and so on. Service is done for the sake of service. In doing service, you are building the Antakarna. As you advance in your service, you come in greater contact with higher realms. For example, take the life of Buddha. He led a life of total dedication and service. His consciousness is the universal consciousness. But if he took money for it, he would not be able to expand his consciousness. We are not saying that money is bad. You must work and make money in order to have a good car, a good house, good food and clothes, a decent life, and be able to pay your bills. But besides this, you are going to have a field of service where you are giving without expectation. If you are interested in the Antakarna, read these few chapters in the books I mentioned. The books which uh, Torka mentioned are The Psyche and Psychicism and The Science of Becoming Oneself then maybe you can start meditation and in the future receive instructions about the science, the science of Antakarna. What are some of the most detrimental things preventing us from building the Antakarna? The first is self-deception. When you start building the bridge and begin deceiving yourself, lying to yourself, this bridge melts away. This is why you sometimes feel very icky inside. If you are sensitive, you feel that something is broken and dissolving. Let us say that you built the Antakarna for 10 years. Then you have a temptation. In that temptation, you are tested and you lie to yourself. Lying to others is okay compared to lying to yourself. Lying to yourself is a cardinal sin. You build an image of yourself through lying and you distort the whole network that you built. Where members of a group sense a common inspiration together, is that part of the Antakarna? Of course. For example, as I am building my Antakarna and you are building yours. If a group is building its Antakarna, it is so much more powerful. They will be transmitters of light, love, and power. This is why the Tibetan master, in his teaching on meditation, advises strongly, 
in the future, I expect some number of people will unite to do unanimous, simultaneous and rhythmic meditation. We do not yet have such a group. How can this higher stage of meditation be given to people when they start meditating for one or two weeks or one or two months or one or two years and then quit? I have been meditating since the age of nine years. This does not mean that I am a master, but I'm trying very hard to surpass myself. I see my weaknesses, my stupidities, my shortcomings, my service, my dedication, my beautiful creativities, and so on. But when I put all of these things in the cup, I say, this is not enough. This is nothing. I did not do anything. In this way, you can surpass yourself. The group Antakarna is very important. In his teaching on the Antakarna, the Tibetan master says, in the future, there will be the Antakarna of humanity in which all races, all people will be united and will build a network to higher realms. At that time, as noted in the legend of Shambhala, hierarchy will disappear and humanity will be the hierarchy on this planet. Only Shambhala will remain. And in the future, even Shambhala will withdraw, leaving humanity to act for the whole. What happens to make the mental permanent atom disintegrate? It never disintegrates. The permanent atom contains permanent records that are, that are tied to the Akakshic records. For example, you have five computers that are tied to a master computer. Everything that is there in the master computer is also in the five computers. When that master computer acts, these five computers receive the exact message. You cannot disintegrate. The permanent atoms do not degenerate. The unlined, the antakarna degenerates, but not the permanent atoms. The permanent atoms are like the hard drive of the computer. You cannot penetrate into them. The permanent atoms have codes and signs and symbols that the human has not yet discovered. What behavior do we manifest that makes the line disintegrate? The right behavior is indicated by the five-pointed star. Dedicate your life to beauty, goodness, righteousness, joy, and freedom. Do not violate the freedom of others. Be free from all of your stupidities, glamours, and illusions, separatism, and be totally joyful. No one can be joyful if he is going on the wrong path. If a person is violating the laws of nature, the laws of human beings, he cannot be joyful. Joy is the result of being totally in tune with the divine essence, righteousness and goodness. When someone opens his mouth and starts cursing, hating and doing monkey business, this disintegrates the antakarna. In one life, you can build the antakarna up to a point, then suddenly everything melts away. You are going to be steadily perseverant. I have given two or three lectures about perseverance. Perseverance is continuous building of the antakarna without letting it melt. For example, close your eyes and imagine an orange colored circle. See how long you can hold that image and how clear it is in your mind. It turns and becomes different colors. It is not clear cut. Perseverance is to supply so much energy and charge into it that it stays without melting away. I'm referring to electrical energy. Concentration is perseverance. It is 
a direct line without wavering. Thus, our solar angel give impressions to us in the same way that the Tibetan master gave the teaching to Alice Bailey? No, it is totally different. You must have experience to know what is happening. For example, once while walking, I heard my teacher's voice in the center of my head. He said, don't go in that direction. Immediately turn back. It is not a voice like you hear with your ears. The voice is inside of your head. This is voice telepathy in the first stage. In the second stage, there is no voice. It is just inspiration or the impression. For example, you sit and write a book in 10 hours without really knowing what you are writing. This is not mediumism, not channeling, not automatic writing or lower psychism. In the Great Pyramid, you enter and then go to the King's Chamber. But before you reach the King's Chamber, there is a pit. In the Ageless Wisdom, this pit was called the Pit of Medium Psychics and Channels. Once you fall into this pit, there is no hope for you. Real advanced communication with higher realms is totally different. Can you give some parallels between real telepathy and channeling? When you are channeling or when you are psychically receiving impressions as a medium, you are under the power of a very low level astral entity. These numerous masquerading entities are everywhere. We understand that these things are happening because of the sensitivity of the people. So hope you enjoyed this understanding about Antakarna and it gives you enough of motivation to practice your meditation and uh, your uh, continued striving for Antakarna building or the building of your spiritual bridge. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Thank you for joining for the session.